Good evening. You really can't see that lying down, can you? But if we bring it up on an angle, we have MD45. MD.45, the album The Craven. So I picked this up about two years ago, secondhand for 50 cents, which is actually a pretty good purchase because you don't see this around a lot. Um, certainly not the kind of thing you'd expect to find in a secondhand shop for 50 cents in a charity shop, but I did. So MD45 was, um, how would you describe it? Dave Mustaine from Megadeth's side project that he did with, well, originally, it's actually, I guess, I've got to say that the, the kind of, well, not really the story behind it, but the story behind it is um, more interesting than the music. Because I find uh, the album to be pretty forgettable and nothing particularly um, amazing. Um, so uh, this was originally released in 1996, I believe. And it was Dave Mustaine on guitar and leaving from uh, Fear, that um, punk band. LA, I was going to say LA punk band. I don't know if they are necessarily um, Los Angeles uh, based, all of them, but um, I think that's kind of what the, the that West Coast punk scene in the early 80s is what I think of when I um, when I think of that band. So he, d he did the vocals on the original recording and I'd say that's an acquired taste, his, vo his vocals. I think uh, quite a recognizable voice, but um, not really something I would particularly uh, go to my way to listen to him doing the vocals on this. Fear is a band I don't know much about at all. I've, you hear them talked about a lot and how they were um, – quite an influential band a lot of people love them but i've i might have heard a couple of their songs in passing but um i don't know what his vocals were like back then in the early 80s but i say by the time this was originally released in 96 um yeah i kind of would say i didn't like his vocals maybe it's just because I, I didn't know what i was expecting um so the the songs on this oh, i'm kind of all over the place here from what I've read, a lot of this I read years ago, so I'm not 100% sure, sure if this is all correct, but this was mid-90s Megadeth. And if you know about mid-90s Megadeth, they were kind of going in a, um, I don't know, I guess like kind of Metallica were as well. And maybe you could even say Slayer, at least with that one album, they what Diabolus Music or what it was called. They were kind of going in an alternative rock direction and a not so much metal. So it's certainly still some metal, but not not like 80s thrash Megadeth at all. And um, because of that, maybe Mustaine felt he needed another outlet for his metal side. And so he... I think he actually took some song Megadeth songs. The songs on this are actually originally a lot of them were Megadeth songs, and then recorded them with Leaving the punk vocalist on vocals. And also, there's also some harmonica on some of the songs. Which songs are harmonica? <laughs> actually, I can't bother going through it. But anyway, so when you hear it, it's it's kind of yeah, it's a bit different. But then at the same time, it. it I don't know if it's just the production or whatever. You can kind of tell it still has Mustaine's. Damp on it, his style. Um, the guy, uh, the the bassist was also from Fear, and Jimmy DeGrasso. He was in Megadeth at the time. Was he in the, at the time? Actually, he was in the late nineties. God, they went through so many bloody drummers and and things. So I, I don't, I'm not one hundred percent sure if they were. I mean, just look. I don't know. Oh yeah, okay. So he he recorded on um, Risk. Great first album to, to to come into the band on. If you yeah, I don't know how much people know or care about Megadeth, but um, Megadeth fans would say those some of those albums in the late nineties, particularly Risk, were not very good. <laughs> and I was actually listening to it the other week. Why was I listening to Risk? 
I think there was a particular reason I was listening to it. I read something and it kind of made it kind of made me want to go back and listen to it again. And um, some of it is quite uh, cringy and silly, but no, I don't think it's. I, I think it's got it's got a worse reputation than it deserves. That song "Crush Him," which I mean, that used to get played on the radio a little bit when it first. That was the I think that was the single, the first single, and that the first part of that. Just yeah, if you're used to to previous Megadeth and you hear, especially the first kind of minute or two minutes of that song, you're like, "What is this?" <laughs> it's got like this kind of like electronic style drum beat, like kind of drum machine, and then it has like this bluesy kind of guitar thing or something. I can't actually remember, yeah, but it's. I just remember the. I remember my, the first time I heard this. I was like, is this Megadeth? And then subsequently, when I've heard it over the years again, I'm always like, God. Oh, this is not very good. And that's kind of, um, I think, Marty Friedman left after that album. Um, anyway. So, maybe Mustaine felt some some uh, frustration in the mid-90s because he was, from what he says, he was giving over a lot of following what Marty Friedman wanted to do and going to more of an alternative rock direction as opposed to a traditional metal thrash metal direction don't know how much i believe of that because <clears throat> certainly that era of mega death was more or was less just the mustaine show and those other guys did have more influence and say over the direction of the band but still it was and always has been the mustaine show to different degrees certainly since they got reformed was it 2004 or i think since then onwards it's been 100 percent the mustang show and he's just a revolving door of, of various characters i to be honest i really can't stand the guy i think he has very few redeeming qualities he just seems like i guess his, his musicianship is a redeeming quality <laughs> which is maybe the most important thing at the end of the day but as a person he just seems like a dickhead an annoying dickhead and i don't even mean like oh he's mean or he's rude or anything like he uh, i think those things are true but it's more like i can't even put my finger on i ex exactly explain what I, it is about him is like it's like i've met so many people like that in my life and they're not even it's like they're like abrasive to be around but they're also just like fuck you're a dick like yeah i'm not really explaining it very well and i just 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 recently i saw this video of him on stage and he was like just like uh, abusing some guy in the audience going shut the shut that fuck up shut the fuck up to this to some how could you in a concert in a show that big how could you be able to hear what one person was saying when the fucking crowd is screaming and hooping and hollering and you're, he's pretending to carry on, be able to carry on a conversation with this one person. This one person is causing him so much annoyance that he's, yeah, anyway. The guy just, yeah, he just, he just seems like a fucking dick. And then the things that he says, he completely contradicts himself. He will say something about a band member. You know, he's, he's shit talks. Every person who's ever been in the band eventually will have some shit talked about them. It's never him. He's never the problem. It's always everyone else around him. And you could say, well, you know, he's a musical genius. He's I, like, he's a, he's a brilliant guitarist and he's written some good songs. To be honest, I've... I've never really got the whole hype of Megadeth. Even their, their you know, golden era... Peace Cells or, or all those other ones that they did, right? It was a Rust in Peace. And I, again, there's some good songs on there, but it's, it's nothing amazing. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't call him a musical genius at all. I'd say he's a, he's a, a very good guitarist and has the ability to write some good songs, but he's also a lot of fucking filler and, and shit. And, um, yeah, he doesn't, uh, in my opinion, doesn't have the right to act the way he does because he does. It's not like he's fucking John Lennon or 
or James Hetfield or, you know, and that whole, you know, leaving aside the whole Metallica thing, even if you like, I know a lot of people don't like him because of that whole thing, but the thing is that he, the way he complains about that and goes on about it and talks about it as so kind of some defining aspect of his life, even if they hadn't have kicked him out then, if he had made it to to kill them all and they'd recorded that, his personality is just so abrasive. And then the whole thing with his with his substance abuse and like he was like a heroin addict through most of the 80s. He would not have, if he wasn't kicked out when he was kicked out, he would have been kicked out a year later or six months later, you know? Which you can see the 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 the, the band lineup, the the lineups that he went through in, in his own band, that has revol- like I said, revolving door apart from Dave Ellison, and he's out now, isn't he? It's often you, you on blabbermouth. I, I kind of check that a couple of times a week or once a week, and it's a it's a rare day that there won't be some kind of headline involving Mustaine or more recently Ellison talking shit about each other in some way or talking uh, Mustaine talking shit about someone else or anyway I've kind of got one off topic here haven't I as a rant about my, my dislike of Dave Mustaine what he did and this is again classic Dave Mustaine in 2004 so eight years after the was it 2004 2006 eight years after the album had been this album had originally been released yes 2004 he decided to remaster it. Now, his story is they could not find the original masters of the vocal tracks of Leaving and his harmonica tracks. So Dave Mustaine thought, well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to re-record the vocals on this remastered uh, version myself. And I've seen two or three different interviews where he kind of uh, conveys in a different what one the actually he writes about it here the way he writes about it in the liner notes is like man we looked for the 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 masters but we just couldn't find them we could find the bass the drums the guitars everything else but just for some reason the vocals no one could locate them damn it and then other things i've heard where he said oh i wanted to reach a bigger audience and this this when this was first released in in uh, 96 it had, you know, done piss all on, on sales wise, and so I wanted to kind of give it another chance to sell better with me singing on it. But apparently, he didn't inform Leaving of this re-recording of the album and taking out his vocals. He never just never said a word about it. And quite recently, I think there was a, a interview in two thousand uh, twenty twenty. Uh, and the interview asked leaving about it and he said yeah i was kind of pissed off about that i'm still kind of pissed off about it just for the fact that he didn't deign me to have the, uh, uh, enough importance to to, to tell me uh, that what was going to happen which you can kind of understand you put out an album you release an album as a kind of an artistic endeavor and he wrote some of the lyrics leaving and i think he had some involvement in some songwriting of some of the songs um how was motel so lyrics there mustaine and ving mustaine lyrics on fight hate ving so a lot of the mustaine does do both parts uh my town yeah, some of those you can actually tell that it's not dave mustaine's lyrics some of these like my town it's to me really doesn't sound like a mustaine style sound uh, song when you hear the lyrics for it uh, voices, hey, our hearts will bleed. The music on nothing is something is uh, is got all the band members credited. Uh, no pain, Ving, Roadman, Ving. So yeah, quite a quite a few of the songs. Um, he you know he was responsible for for uh, parts of it, the lyrics at least, and sometimes the music. And so when. You've put this out there, and who knows how he felt about it. I'm, I'm sure he was proud of it, you know. And then just eight, ten years later, suddenly you see in the shops, oh, that's that album. Oh, hang on, they've taken my voice off it. You know, you can't help but think, well, that's obviously they didn't think, or Mustaine didn't think it was very good. And you could, 
understand why someone would be quite, um, you know, I don't know, feel bad, feel embarrassed or hurt or, or uh, slighted in some way when that would happen. It's a much more punk sounding album. Obviously, they, you know, using a punk singer, but not just that, just the musician style as well. And like I said, apparently some of these the, the tracks were originally intended for Megadeth, and maybe he picked out certain ones that he felt had a more of a punk feel. Um, Hell's Motel, uh, I think that song's good if they didn't have kind of silly lyrics. Um, what's the other one? I think Fight Hate. I like this, the bass at the beginning of that. My Town, like I said, again, you can really tell not Mustaine style lyrics. You know, all much of Mustaine stuff is um, focused on very similar themes, isn't it? Like the government and uh, human nature into like control and that kind of stuff. Um, war. Uh, so when you see it, one about my town and Hell's Hotel over the other, uh, you know, you think, well, that doesn't really sound like traditional Mustang topics there. Uh, so yeah, overall, I'd say it's an okay album. If you really like Megadeth, you'd probably like this. And if you're a fan of Mustang, I'd say you would definitely like this. It's got his voice on it. Uh, and it's not the version with the 96 version without his voice. It's something a little bit different. I guess it's kind of like a, a slightly different gear than typical uh, Megadeth. But me not being the greatest Megadeth fan, I'd say um, it's not something I listen to a whole lot. It's not something, I, yeah, maybe I've been too harsh. It's not something I'd turn off either. If I put this on, I'd listen the whole way through to it. It's got some good energy to it. Let's say that. It's got some good energy to it. But maybe this is Dave Mustaine clouds things so negatively for me that sometimes I can't help but feel certain negativity towards his projects, which I know is unfair. But he really is just a, a prat. Yeah, maybe prat is a bit like, yeah. He thinks he's a badass, but he's just an embarrassing dork. <laughs> anyway, sorry if I've offended any Mustang fans. I'm sure there's some out there. Uh, so yeah, MD45. Apparently MD is, uh, was it Dave Mustaine reversed? And 45 is, what is it? That's something to a leaving. Reversed. I can't remember. The four and the five is the number of something. I can't remember what it is exactly. Anyway, we'll 